DJ Storms. And in just two days, live on the WWE Network. A real life David versus Goliath battle will take place as the leader of the Balor Club collides with the Beast with the Universal Championship. Also, the man will come around to take back her SmackDown Women's Championship against the Empress who dethroned her without actually defeating her back at TLC. And finally, one man and one woman will take their rightful place in history when they outlast 29 other males and 29 other females. One man and one woman will solidify their place in history and punch their ticket to WrestleMania 35. But before it is time for the man and the empress to come and fight, before it is time for that one man and that one woman to make history, before it is time for the Royal Rumble, It's time for the rundown! Thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another video right here on YouTube.com. As of course, you already know who I am. Mr. Controversy and the operator of the best damn Twitter handle known to mankind. This is the rundown for... WWE Royal Rumble 2019, which of course is streaming live on the WWE Network from the Chase Field in Phoenix, Arizona, with the pre-show starting at a special 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, originally, me and Thunder were getting together to do some collaboration for the rundown for the Rumble, but I haven't been able to get in contact with Thunder all week. I don't know what's going on. Um, I'm supposed to do a storm stream later today. Um, I'm gonna see what's going on, I'm gonna see what's going on with Thunder, I'm gonna see where, where he stands right now. I don't know what's going on, I haven't been able to get in contact with him all week, and I don't know, I'm a, I'm a little worried about Thunder. I'm just a little worried about Thunder. I will get that taken care of for you guys. Me and Thunder will do some collaboration somewhere down the line, I promise you. Trust me, he's just as busy, just as I am. But I will get in contact with him as soon as possible. But anyway, aside from that. Welcome back to the channel. It's time to talk about the Royal Rumble because uh, aside from TakeOver, I already did my rundown for TakeOver. We got a big weekend as it relates to the Royal Rumble. Big weekend. A lot of top tier matches, a lot of top tier talent booked for the Rumble. And, you know, this could very well end up being the most important pay-per-view of the year, whether you want to admit it or not. So we're going to go back uh, match by match and we are going to talk about each individual match, each individual championship. Uh, both Rumbles. We're going to discuss everything in between. Why don't we start with the pre-show? Two matches on the pre-show. And I was kind of expecting it. I was kind of expecting it. Let's talk about the Cruiserweight Championship Fatal 4-Way. Buddy Murphy defending against Kalisto, Akira Tozawa, and Hideo Itami. Um, I have a feeling that Triple H is just playing it by pay-per-view at this rate with 205 Live. Because, like I said before, I wholeheartedly believed that Mustafa Ali was going to be the man to take the title off of Buddy Murphy. Until he was moved to SmackDown. This match right here is the challenge that Buddy Murphy asked for. Buddy Murphy is operating on a level that is above everyone on 205 Live. Murphy's been above 205 Live since that first match with Cedric Alexander. So, Buddy Murphy realistically needs to be on the main roster. Well, technically, he is on the main roster. He needs to be on Raw or SmackDown. Right now, I just can't see Buddy Murphy losing this. There's no way Buddy Murphy can lose this. The, the only other person who should even be slightly considered to win this match is Hideo Itami. Because they've built Itami up with Arya Davari. He's got a newfound attitude. He has two huge victories in the triple threat this past Tuesday and against Cedric Alexander. Plus, he's never held the Cruiserweight Championship. Kalisto's got his business with the Lucha House Party. Tozawa's great at what he does. 
he'll be cruiserweight champion again, but right now he's got the partnership with Brian Kendrick. Tozawa is merely there to be the fill-in babyface for the moment. So that leaves Atami and Murphy. Murphy's the champion. He's been the champion since October. Murphy, I, I, I just can't see losing this. I really don't know who they're going to have take the title off of Buddy Murphy. Because ever since Mustafa left, that's a huge void that they have to fill. Now, they brought in Humberto Carrillo, but no matter how good Humberto is, and he is great, the, the kid's really coming along, there's no way you're going to fill that void. Not with a guy like Humberto Carrillo. It's going to take a while. The reputation and the legacy that Mustafa built on 205 Live, it's been above everyone else. All the people next in line to be Cruiserweight Champion are all heels. Atami, Rush, Gulak. Carrillo's not ready. I mean, if you want to do a member of the Lucha House Party versus Buddy Murphy, if you want to do Grand Metalik versus Buddy Murphy for the Cruiserweight Championship, I wouldn't mind that because those two put on some great matches in the past. But I honestly don't know who's going to take the title off of Murphy. It really, it really is a mystery at this rate. I can't look at anyone on 205 Live, and I can't tell you that's going to be the next Cruiserweight Champion. I thought that they were going to give it to Mustafa, and then they were going to build up Leo Rush for that opportunity at uh, Mustafa for the Cruiserweight Championship. They didn't do that. So, the future of the Cruiserweight Championship, it really is, it really is up in the air. I don't know where they're going to go with this. Now, Murphy. No way he's losing. I, I just can't see him losing. Even though Atami is going to be Cruiserweight Champion down the line, I have a feeling that they're not just going to give the title away to Hideo Atami. Not in this situation. Murphy's not losing that title until, at least at the earliest, Murphy's losing the title at WrestleMania. To whom, I don't know. As far as this match goes, you give these guys 10-15 minutes, they're going to put on a great match. I have a feeling that this is going to be a great match. Um, hopefully, they'll put it on at a decent time where a lot more people are in the stadium so they can actually watch the match. Um, I have a feeling we're going to see some great spots. Obviously, Kalisto and Tozawa play great baby faces. Buddy Murphy, what can I say about Buddy Murphy? Hideo Watami, he's a great heel in his own right. Buddy Murphy wins this match. I don't know how, but regardless, uh, Buddy Murphy is going to retain the Cruiserweight Championship and then move on. To whom? I don't know. Um, if I was to choose someone, I would not mind seeing Buddy Murphy versus Akira Tozawa in a one-on-one -on -one match down the line. That would be pretty good. Not going to lie. So, Buddy Murphy to retain the Cruiserweight Championship. Now, let's talk about the United States Championship match between Shinsuke Nakamura and Rusev. Um, what can I say about these two? They've been putting on some of the most underrated matches of the entire year back in 2018. I mean, that match they put on on Christmas Day, fucking phenomenal. Phenomenal shit right there. Rusev is a great babyface. Nakamura is a great heel. Um, I expect another great match from these two. This is going to be the final nail in the coffin. Um, rumor going around has it that the Elimination Chamber for SmackDown, the WWE Championship, it's going to read as follows. At the Elimination Chamber, Daniel Bryan will defend the WWE title inside the chamber against Styles, Ali, Orton, Mysterio, and Nakamura. So that would entail that Nakamura is going to lose this match and possibly win a qualifying match to go into the chamber when we actually get to that point. Um, as far as Rusev goes, with the way that they have been building up Andrade, C, and Almas, don't be surprised if Almas actually gets a United States Championship title opportunity against Rusev at WWE Elimination Chamber. That's how I see this happening, because Almas, Almas needs to be a champion. Almas needs to be a champion the United States Championship is the perfect championship for Almas to have because right now the WWE Championship picture is quite full. I don't know where they're going with the WWE Championship picture in Daniel Bryan. I'm assuming it should be someone big. I would assume that it could be Ali. It could be Rusev. It could be Mysterio. Bryan needs a good baby face. So one of those three would be a good choice. As far as uh, Rusev goes, Rusev, this is his first title defense of his third reign. Rusev at least needs to have that title at least until the Elimination Chamber. That's I, I, I don't know who's going to take the title off of Rusev because they're building up a couple of people. For all we know, Mustafa could very well be in line to become United States Champion. 
You never know because on SmackDown, you got a lot of talent that is going to be put in these types of prime positions. And there's so much talent that, you know, you could pick one, two, three, four, five, six potential people to be the next champion. We all know AJ is not winning. We all know AJ is most likely going to ask for a lighter schedule. We don't know where AJ is going to fit into WrestleMania. But right now, AJ is in the WWE Championship picture. Most likely, he'll be in the chamber. As far as the WWE United States Championship goes, Rusev to retain. Uh, there's no reason to give Nakamura the United States title back. He held the title for 160 days. You did all you could with Nakamura in the United States Championship. Put Nakamura in the chamber. Probably move Nakamura over to Raw after WrestleMania if he doesn't decide to leave. But Rusev to retain the United States title. I expect it to be a great match as always. And that's all I can say about that. Now on to the main show. Let's get this out of the way. Miz and Shane versus The Bar. I did not want this match at all. I think it was it's a complete waste of a match. Um, I think that, you know, it should have been the club. Gals and Anderson versus The Bar. This whole Miz-Shane storyline has been extremely cringy. Now, don't get me wrong. Most likely, this, this could very well end up being a very good tag team match. For all we know. This could end up being a very good tag team match. Matter of fact, I hope it is. Because that's what I want to see. I want to see good wrestling. That's what I look for when I watch professional wrestling. Not just in WWE, but professional wrestling as a whole. I look for good wrestling. And if these guys can give me good wrestling, then, you know, it's... I don't really have much to complain about. The only thing I have to complain about, and the only thing that I, I'm, I'm a little unsure about, is the outcome. Because, like, either way you look at it, both outcomes are somewhat shit. Because it's either the bar retains and we get a Miz Shane McMahon match at WrestleMania, which we don't need. I mean, yeah, the bar is still the champions and it's still on a legitimate tag team. But then we get Miz and Shane at WrestleMania and nobody needs that. Who takes the titles off the bar? Should have been Gals and Anderson. I'm still wondering where Sanity is as well. Or Miz and Shane win. And then we get this Cinderella run. Guarantee you they win the titles at the Rumble, lose the titles at WrestleMania. Guarantee it. Guarantee it. I mean, I hope for a great match, but you know, both outcomes, it's almost like the less of two evils. I mean, I guess I'll go with Shane and The Miz for now. I don't want, I don't want to see Shane and Miz as tag team champions, but... At this rate, that's what they're building up Shane and Miz for. The tag team titles. So, I yeah, can't really say anything about that. I hope it's a good match. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. I don't want to see Shane and Miz as tag team champions, but I think they're going to go with that route. Let's talk about the Raw Women's Championship. Let's talk about Ronda Rousey and Sasha Banks. There's been a report going around that Ronda Rousey is supposedly leaving WWE after WrestleMania 35. So that would entail that they're looking for a big match. So if she's leaving after WrestleMania, then don't expect Ronda Rousey to lose the championship to Sasha Banks. Now, as far as the match goes, we all know who the winner's going to be. But with Sasha Banks in it, you know it's going to be a great match. This could very well be Ronda Rousey's best match to date. So far, Ronda Rousey's best match to date has been with Charlotte. Charlotte at, um, at uh, Survivor Series. I mean, if that's what you're looking for, that's going to be the match that's going to pretty much play benchmark to Ronda Rousey versus Sasha Banks. And you give these women 15 minutes, they're going to put on a show stealer. Ronda Rousey, great for, for uh, the time that she's been given. She has gelled so well. What can I say about Sasha Banks? She's one of the best female performers in the entire Monday Night Raw roster. I mean, you just take a look at um, you take a look at that women's division up and down. There's not that many people can that can measure up to Sasha Banks. The only women that can measure up to Sasha Banks is Ember Moon. I don't know what to do with Ember Moon, but you know, if Ember Moon, if Ember Moon is not going to be in a championship match sooner rather than later, then put Ember Moon as the winner of the Royal Rumble. If it's not going to be Becky and Charlotte, make Ember Moon win the Rumble. You can have Ember Moon versus Asuka. Two. 
or not, not Ember Moon vs. Asuka, two, Ember Moon vs. Asuka, three, at WrestleMania for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Now, that is a women's championship match if I've ever seen one. But, uh, as far as the match goes, it's going to be a great match. Um, I fully expect it to live up to the hype. Ronda Rousey to retain, and she is going to move on to bigger and better things. Who knows, maybe she might even end up competing at the Elimination Chamber. Ronda Rousey could very well end up competing at the Elimination Chamber. I would love to see, I would love to see, uh, Ronda Rousey versus Ember Moon at the Chamber. If Ember Moon doesn't win the Rumble, put Ember Moon against Ronda Rousey at the Chamber to get a successful title defense in there. Why not? There you go. But Ronda Rousey to retain the Raw Women's Championship against Sasha Banks. Let's talk about the SmackDown Women's Championship with Asuka and Becky Lynch. WWE needs to make the right choice here. How this needs to play out is very, very simple. Becky does not need to win the championship. Becky needs to go into the Women's Royal Rumble, and she needs to go in. She needs to either win the Rumble or have a tie with Charlotte. That's how this needs to go down. Becky needs to be involved in the Royal Rumble in some way, shape, or form, and she needs to be on the winning end somehow. You cannot end the Royal Rumble without Becky as a either a co-winner or a solo winner. There's been numerous reports going around that they're going to have Becky and Charlotte go in there and eliminate each other, and you get the triple threat match with Ronda at WrestleMania. That is the best route to go at this rate. As far as the match with Becky and Asuka... Have Asuka go over clean. Asuka right now, though she's the SmackDown Women's Champion, there hasn't been enough hype and mystique around Asuka. So what this needs to be, this needs to be the defining moment for Asuka, and you need to have Asuka beat Becky Lynch clean. Becky Lynch is the hottest thing going in the women's division right now. Have Asuka go over on Becky Lynch clean. That way, Asuka's mystique and Asuka's specialness will come back. Asuka's specialness was killed with Charlotte when she lost the undefeated streak at WrestleMania. Asuka should realistically still be undefeated, and she should have been SmackDown Women's Champion all year. But now, she's in the right position. She's facing Becky Lynch. You need to have Asuka beat Becky clean. That way, Asuka will get her credibility up, get her specialness back, get her mystique back. Becky would then be more desired by the fans to win the Royal Rumble more. You have Becky lose, then the fans want Becky Lynch more, and it's even going to be even more special when she enters the Rumble, and either she wins solo, or she wins with Charlotte as co-winner, and they eliminate each other. Becky belongs in the main event of WrestleMania 35, whether you want to admit it or not. If you do not think so, well then you are a complete fucking idiot. You are a complete fucking idiot, and you need to go, and you need to check yourself, because I think you've already wrecked yourself. Asuka to beat Becky Lynch at the Royal Rumble. Let's talk about the WWE Championship match between Styles and Bryan. This is mainly being built off the fact that Vince McMahon wanted the real AJ Styles, Daniel Bryan, doing great heel work as always. Um, Bryan wins. Uh, there's really nothing more to discuss other than it's going to be a great match and Brian's going to win. Where AJ goes from there, I don't really know. I'm assuming that they have something planned for AJ Styles, but I don't know exactly what it is. I believe it's probably going to have to do with Vince McMahon, obviously probably trading him to Raw. Vince has wanted AJ on Raw for a while. AJ Styles hasn't signed a new contract, I don't know why, but... If they're not going to give AJ a lighter schedule, then AJ could be heading to AEW. Whether you want to admit it or not, it's a huge possibility. You cannot count him out. Now, like I said, match should be the same thing that we got at TLC. Should be a great wrestling match, great storytelling, and I expect Daniel Bryan to win. There's no way you can take the title off of Bryan at this rate. Daniel Bryan needs to go into WrestleMania as the WWE Champion. Brian is the money guy, and he is the face of SmackDown Live as we speak. Daniel Bryan to beat AJ Styles. Finn Balor versus Brock Lesnar. 
I have wanted this match for over a year. I have been waiting for this match for over a year. This is the match that a lot of people have been anticipating on the Raw side because A, it's a first time ever. B, it's a real David versus Goliath feel. C, we all know Finn Balor is a certified main eventer. We all know that Finn Balor is face of the company material. We all know Finn Balor could carry that brand and that company on his shoulders if he wanted to. Or if they, if they gave him the opportunity to, they could make Balor the face of that brand. And I'm going to be quite honest with you. The way that they're having, they're probably going to have Seth Rollins win the Royal Rumble and go on to face Brock Lesnar. I'm going to be quite honest with you. I don't want to see Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar. I, I don't. And the reason why is because Finn Balor has basically been put in this position where Finn Balor has become the biggest babyface on Monday Night Raw right now. Finn Balor, whether you want to admit it or not, is the biggest babyface and the most over guy on Raw right now just based on what they've been doing with him over the course of the last few weeks. They have pretty much taken Finn Balor and the way that they have pretty much pushed him out of fear that he could very well go and sign with AEW because they think he might be unhappy with his current treatment and the way that they had, had him beat McIntyre at TLC the way that he beat Dolph Ziggler and McIntyre in the Triple Threat, how he beat Jordan Devlin at uh, NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool, and he won that Fatal 4-Way by pinning Cena, they've made him into the biggest babyface on Monday Night Raw right now. Seth Rollins is pretty much fourth or fifth. Seth Rollins has taken a few steps down. It's Finn Balor is at the top. Then it's Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre is the next top tier heel. Then you can pretty much add Ronda Rousey in there and Sasha Banks. And then it's Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins has pretty much been taken down a notch. Mainly because of the fact that WWE has just, just pretty much shrugged their shoulders. And pretty much gave Seth Rollins the short end of the stick. He gave Seth Rollins the short end of the stick. Um, they pretty much kept him out of the main event at SummerSlam by giving it to Ziggler, only to give it right back to Rollins, only so Roman Reigns could fucking take the main event because they're too fucking stubborn to admit that Roman was a failure right from the start. And now we're here. Now, I'm not going to be mad if Seth Rollins wins the Rumble and we're going to get Seth Rollins versus Lesnar because more likely than not, it's going to be a great match because Lesnar works better with the smaller guys. But... With what's going on right now, I would much rather have Finn Balor just go in there and be a transitional champion and just drop it to Rollins at WrestleMania. Plus, I'm sick of the part-timers in major championship matches. And enough of these part-timers. We don't need Rollins. We don't need Rollins versus Lesnar. We don't need. We don't need all these. All these major. All these major part-timers that were once. That were once um, great back in the day. We don't need them to come back and be in these world championship matches anymore. We don't need Brock Lesnar as universal champion going into a universal championship match at WrestleMania. We don't. we already seen that twice. We've seen it at WrestleMania 33. Saw it at WrestleMania 34. <clears throat> we don't need to see it again. My, but, you know, my heart says Finn Balor. My head says Brock Lesnar. So, you know... It's gonna be it's gonna be a great match. We all know that uh, Brock Lesnar he wanted to work with Finn Balor and Brock Lesnar, based on what we saw on Monday, Brock Lesnar is going to make Finn Balor look like a fucking star. Brock Lesnar is going to sell his ass off for of Finn Balor, and we're going to get probably one of the best matches of the year. So as far as uh, the match goes, I can't wait to see this match. I've wanted to see this match for over a year, and. You know, I, I want Finn Balor. I, I, I want to see Finn Balor win. Everyone wants to see Finn Balor win. But in the end, I believe Brock Lesnar is going to take it. I, I, I just really don't see WWE having the having the balls to pull the trigger. They just don't. They just they just got to they gotta stick to their own plan. I don't know what to tell you there. Now, let's talk about the Royal Rumbles. The Women's Royal Rumble. 
Um, I expect we see a lot of uh, interesting surprises, just like we did last year. Um, I would love to see Candice LeRae from NXT. I would also love to see... Uh, who else from NXT? I'd love to see Shayna Baszler in there. Wouldn't mind seeing Shayna Baszler in there. Uh, Kyrie Sane and Io Shirai. Good surprise in there. Probably going to see some legends like Alundra Blaze and Maria and Beth Phoenix. Most likely. As far as the winners go... It either needs to be Becky, or it needs to be Becky and Charlotte eliminating each other in almost a tribute to what happened with Lex Luger and Bret Hart. Charlotte cannot win. Charlotte, or at least not alone. Charlotte cannot win on her own. Charlotte cannot win alone. If you have Charlotte win the Royal Rumble, we are going to get another Roman Reigns-like incident from 2015. WWE never learns. And whether you want to admit it or not, um, they still, they still never learn. And I'm, I'm saying this right now because based on WWE's track record with the Royal Rumble, they have pretty much used the Royal Rumble as almost a way to flip the fans off every chance that they get. Look at the track record. 2014, leaving Daniel Bryan out of the Rumble and giving us Batista. Only to have Bryan join later, based on fan reception. 2015, perhaps the worst Royal Rumble of all time. Having Daniel Bryan get eliminated within 10 minutes, only to give us the finger and give us a joke. A John Cena ripoff in Roman Reigns. 2016. Having Roman Reigns go in there and defend the championship, only to have Triple H win the championship, and then we get Roman and Triple H in one of the worst main events in WrestleMania history. 2017. Giving us Randy Orton. Having Roman come out at number 30, and pretty much making Randy Orton's win... Meaningless, a 10-minute match with Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania, and then we get Roman and The Undertaker in the main event. <clears throat> 2018 is probably the first year in a long, long time that they actually got the Rumble winner right. We are here in 2019. We are in yet another situation where... We have Becky Lynch, who is the hottest thing in the women's division and the biggest baby face in the women's division right now. Becky Lynch is Daniel Bryan. Charlotte is Roman Reigns. Now, normally I would say have Becky Lynch win, but right now the storyline with Ronda and Charlotte and Becky the best option would be to have both women eliminate each other and have Ronda Rousey say, I want both women. We get a triple threat. That is the best route to go. That way, everyone is satisfied. Vince can have his little fantasy with Charlotte and Ronda. The fans get what they want. If anyone is to win other than Becky or Becky and Charlotte, needs to be Ember Moon. <clears throat> but I don't really understand why they would do that when Charlotte and Becky are both on SmackDown, so you need some way to get those two over to Ronda's side, which is Raw, at WrestleMania. Because Survivor Series is the only time of the year where Raw and SmackDown go head-to-head -head in direct competition. But you have Becky and Charlotte win the Royal Rumble, then you can you know, cross that loophole cross into that loophole, and then we get Ronda, Charlotte, and Becky. If we have an incident where Charlotte Flair just wins the Royal Rumble, no Becky. Then you can expect what we got in 2015. Not as, not as worse, probably, but it's going to be bad. But I'm calling Charlotte and Becky to eliminate each other. Now, 
Let's talk about the men's Royal Rumble. There's really only two choices, two logical choices here. Um, it's either going to be Drew McIntyre or it's going to be Seth Rollins, and I'm going with Seth Rollins. Um, there's reports going around that Abyss and Sanjay Dutt from Impact Wrestling, they left. We could very well see one of them or both of them in the Royal Rumble. Um, as far as NXT goes, I'd love to see Aleister Black and Velveteen Dream. I guarantee we see Velveteen Dream in the Royal Rumble. Chase Field's going to have a heart attack. We're definitely going to see some good surprises. I can sense it. As far as the winner goes, I really can't see anybody else but Seth Rollins right now. Drew McIntyre is really not in a position where he's going to be that guy. Not, not yet, at least. He is ready to be the face of Raw, but at this rate, there's a bigger story to tell with Seth Rollins and how they're basically trying to build Seth Rollins back up after they fucking ruined him in the last five months of 2018. So I can't really see anybody else but Seth Rollins winning the Royal Rumble. But we're going to see how that plays out. I expect a great Rumble. And I expect Seth Rollins to win. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up this edition of The Rundown. I would like to thank each and every single one of you who tuned into this video. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go on Instagram. I want you to follow me on Instagram at the DJ Storms. I also want you to follow me on Twitter at Storms Takeover. I want you to hit that thumbs up. Try and get it to 10 thumbs up. I'm trying to move up in the world. You're going to give me a thumbs down? Well, there you go. I don't need you. You are a worthless piece of trash. We are trying to get to 200 subs. We're just 11 subs away from 200. I need you guys to hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I also need you to drop that notifications bell with a huge coup de gras. That way, you will know whenever I pop up on YouTube because Whenever I pop up on YouTube, it is the best time to be on YouTube. Oh, and you better believe it, motherfucker. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm DJ Storms. Oh, by the way, if you haven't already done so, go and check out the rundown for NXT TakeOver Phoenix. I'll put the link in the description. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm DJ Storms. I hope you enjoy TakeOver. Hope you enjoy the Rumble. This has been the rundown. You guys have a good one.